You may not think it, but one of the most important things to consider when you're learning to drive is where to put your feet on the pedals, where you should put your heel, um, whether it should be to the left or the right of the pedal or directly on top of it. How you do this makes a massive difference to how hard or easy it is to control the car. The first pedal I'm gonna talk about is the gas pedal or the accelerator pedal or the throttle pedal, whatever you wanna call it, it's the pedal on the right. And it's the same in both an automatic and a manual car. The only difference between an automatic and a manual when it comes to pedals is that a manual has a clutch pedal as well. So you want to have your heel on the ground when you put your foot on the gas pedal. That is really important. Some people, believe it or not, do have their heel in the air when they go to learn to drive. And as a result, when they press the gas pedal, they press it way too much, and that makes the engine speed go way higher than you want it to. Keeping your heel on the ground allows you to have better control of the pedal. And that's because you're not having to use all of your leg muscles to control your whole leg midair. That's hard. Having your heel on the ground and just pivoting the top of your foot like this gives you a lot more control over that pedal. You also want to consider how close to the pedal you want to be. You don't want to be so far away that when you press the gas pedal, you slip off. But neither do you want to be so close that there's an awful lot of movement of your foot for very little movement of the gas pedal. You want the ball of your foot to be near the bottom of the pedal with your big toe on the pedal too. That normally gives most people good control over the pedal. And another factor to consider is where your foot should be sideways. So should it be directly behind the pedal, like this, like this. I actually tell people normally to put your foot over the brake pedal, like so, and then pivot to the gas, because you use your right foot for the gas and the brake. Um, even in an automatic, you'll generally use your right foot for the gas and the brake pedal. The left foot in an automatic doesn't do anything most of the time. And in a manual, your left foot is solely for your clutch. And the reason why I say that is because generally speaking, most people get better control of the gas when their foot is slightly sideways. And when they go to brake, they now have more potential power for the brake because they're square with the brake. It allows them to get to the brake quickly from the gas and it gives them power to press that brake down. The reason why most people have a bit more control over the gas when the foot is slightly sideways like this, or actually quite a bit sideways, is because you're not having to lift the tip of your foot up, which strains this part of your leg. When it's to one side, I'm actually more relaxed. And even though I'm relaxed, I'm not really putting much pressure on that gas pedal. I'm not having to keep this part of my foot lifted up permanently for half an hour, an hour, two hours, however long your journey is. It's more relaxed like that. Like this, it's straining this part of the leg like that. I'm quite relaxed and I can get to the brake very quickly if I need to. Now I know it depends on how big you are. If you've got big feet, small feet, long legs, short legs, that's gonna make a difference to how you place your feet. And even your car can make a slight difference. This is more for the average person to larger person. If you're a smaller person, you may have to do things differently. And I'll go into that later. Now I'm gonna talk about the brake pedal. And again, you don't wanna be so far away that you may slip off the pedal, but you don't wanna be so close that the pedal's in your archway and you have less control over it. You may be able to brake hard, yes, that's fine. But most of the time you stop, you're not braking hard, you want to brake in a nice silky smooth way with that nice show first stop at the end as you lift the brake a little bit as you finish your stop to make it smooth. You also need to consider where to place your foot. Should it be directly over the pedal like this or should it be to the right of the pedal? Certainly shouldn't be to the left of the pedal. And if you've got, I don't know, size five and above feet, you can generally get away of putting your foot directly over the pedal and you can pivot between the two nicely. If your feet are a bit small, some people when they pivot, they, don't, they can't reach the gas or they're doing that. So they have to put their foot a bit more in between the two. So they still have relatively good control of the brake, but they're able to reach the gas pedal. If you drive an automatic, that's it, gas and brake. If you have a manual, you need to think about the clutch pedal and how to use that clutch pedal. This does divide opinion in the comments. 
And should you keep your heel on the ground or should you keep your heel up? Combination of the two, I recommend. A lot of people believe that you've got to keep your heel down when using the clutch. And if you keep your heel down all the time, in most cars, that can lead to a serious problem. I will show you now. I'm gonna try and move my foot slightly to the side of the pedal. Hopefully I can get it down without hitting this uh, clutch rest here. So you can still see part of the pedal. The ball of my foot is at the bottom of the pedal, which is where you generally want your foot on all your pedals. As I push it down, keep my heel down, the pedal stays in the same place. But if I keep my heel down now and pivot up, that pedal is going to get lower underneath my foot. So now the ball of my foot is in the middle of the pedal. And with the clutch, you don't lift it once. With the clutch pedal, especially in traffic, you can lift it up to the bike point, push it down to the floor, lift it up to the bike point, push it down to the floor many, many times before you actually have a chance to come fully off the pedal to readjust your foot. So let's say we're in traffic and I haven't been able to go fast enough to come off the clutch, I actually have to push the clutch back down again. So I'll push it back down again, keeping my heel on the ground. Now I'm gonna start lifting it up again whilst my heel is on the ground to move forwards as the traffic starts moving. Now the ball of my foot is at the top of the pedal. So the pedal is sliding down the bottom of my foot. I'm losing control of this pedal quite quickly. Again, I need to slow down, so I push the clutch down and now when I need to move again, I'm gonna lift with my heel on the floor and now the, I can't actually lift the top of my foot, it's now stuck on something underneath the car there, on whatever you call this bit of the car, it's actually the knee airbag. And, I, and I've lost control of the car. So within, I think that was three movements, I now lost control of my clutch pedal and the only thing I can really do is lift my heel up and come all the way off. I mean, I could come up gradually, but I really don't have much control of the car there. What I often see people do when they get themselves in this trouble, they start doing this, try and wiggle their leg down to get the ball of their foot on the pedal again to get good control. That is not ideal. You want to keep your heel up when you lift to the bike point. When you get to the bike point, then you can put your heel back down to support your leg and keep it stable. You can make minor adjustments to the bike point, but you don't want your heel down when you're lifting from the very bottom of the clutch pedal travel. As I said, that divides opinion because some people like to keep their heel on the ground. If that works for you, do it. But in my experience of teaching people, when someone has a heel on the ground, I know very quickly because we're in traffic and they start losing control of the car. And I think, well, why are they doing this? Why are they struggling with their clutch control so much in traffic when they can set off fine? So I start looking at their, their clutch foot and I see that's exactly what's happening. And lifting their heel up to get to the bite point, then supporting the heel on the ground or supporting their foot by putting the heel on the ground generally solves the issue. It does depend on the car you have as well. Like, a transit van tends to have pedals differently. It, it doesn't have pedals like that. In a van, often pedals are more like that. And because of how you put your foot over your pedals in a van, you can actually, I, I find I can keep my heel on the ground, put the clutch to the floor and bring it all the way up and the pedal doesn't slide underneath my foot. Another clue that my customer is doing it this way, keeping their heel on the ground from the very bottom is when it's wet and they get in the car and they sit off and you hear this as the pedal, I hope that sound wasn't too excruciating there, but a real loud squeaky sound as the pedal slides under their foot and I think, aha, I know what they're doing. They're, they're keeping the heel on the ground and pivoting from the very bottom. Let's now take them to a hill. So I get them to a hill and I go, okay, up this hill now, a nice quiet road uphill. I say, I want you to move very slowly up this hill. You can't come off the clutch fully. You can't go so fast that you have to come off the clutch fully. We're gonna keep the speed below three miles an hour or four miles an hour. It's just a low speed up this hill as if you were in traffic. They can't do it. Because when you're trying to control a car at low speed, you have to keep, or a manual car at low speed, you have to keep moving your foot up and down. And within three or four adjustments of them doing that, they've lost the car and I have to step in and help them. Earlier on in the video, I said I'll talk about what to do if you've got small feet, because you can't always reach the ground and reach the pedal, depending on how high the pedal is compared to the ground. That does vary from car to car. 
In this car, you're pretty much well catered for if your feet are size five and above. If they're size four, it's gonna be a bit harder. If they're less than size four, you're really gonna struggle. For people of say size four or maybe five, they may have to pivot their foot in between the gas and the brake like this, as I said earlier, instead of being completely square over the brake and then to the gas. If your feet are smaller than size four, what I find my customers need to do in this car is have their heel in the air because they literally cannot reach the pedal with the heel on the floor. That makes it much harder. If your heel is in the air, it takes you a lot longer to get good at the brake pedal. Not so much the clutch, because the clutch is less sensitive. The bite point of the clutch is less sensitive than the, the brakes or the bite point of the brakes. The brakes do have a bite point. They don't start working as soon as you start pressing the brake pedal. You press it, there's always a bit of dead, dead space before they bite and they actually start to slow you down. The gas is never a problem because that is actually very close to the floor there. And the gas is always lower than the brake because that makes it a bit easier. You, you don't want to have your leg too close to you when you're driving for long periods of time because that really starts to ache. So if you can just stretch your leg a little bit more, that can make it a bit more comfortable. I actually have a customer who I can't teach at the moment because of lockdown and she's ready. She's ready to pass her test and she has very small feet and she hasn't been able to keep her heel down. So she has to have her heel up and it's been quite difficult for her or she's found it quite hard to get good at the brakes. She's good at the brakes now, but she's still sometimes, hello Alexandra, if you're watching, she still sometimes presses the brake a little bit hard, especially if she's in a bit of a hurry and wants to brake a bit more quickly because you don't have as much control. Over years of experience and practice, you'll get even better at that because you'll learn to control all of her leg. It just takes longer to learn it. Or when she buys a car, maybe she'll find a car where the pedals are slightly lower that are more suited for her. And for the clutch pedal, if you've got smaller feet, quite often it just means you can never put your heel down. I've taught plenty of people who can't put their heel down when they lift the clutch to the bike point because they can try, but again, it doesn't reach. If they did, they'll be pivoting their foot so far forward to reach this higher bit of ground uh, that they would be completely out of control of the clutch. So they just get quite good at having their heel in the air the whole time they're using the clutch. And for most people, actually, that's not normally a problem. People get better at that a lot quicker than they get better at the brake. Again, because the brake is more sensitive to that minor little input. Uh, this car does have quite sensitive brakes, as do most modern cars. A tiny little adjustment, you really feel it. Just before lockdown, I was actually giving lessons to a lady in this car who could not put a heel on the ground when she was controlling the brake. And this is a problem, I know. As I said, you can learn to do it with your heel in the air, but she just wasn't getting better. She was unable to stop the car smoothly with her heel in the air. Three lessons in, I was just thinking, this is not working. I'm not seeing an improvement here. I looked at her foot placement. I could try to move the seat higher, lower, a bit further back, a bit closer, just to try and make it easier. And it just didn't work. When her heel was on the ground, she could not do this with her foot. She could a tiny bit, but not enough to operate a brake. And I know she had her own car. And I thought, let's go and have a look in your car and see how it is in that one. It was a Mazda 2, I believe about a 2012 Mazda 2, and the pedals were just closer to the floor and that suited her feet. And we did a lesson in that car and within an hour, her braking had improved dramatically. The reason why I'm telling you this is because sometimes it's not you. Sometimes it is the car and you need to change car to try and improve. Give it a go. There's no harm in doing that. I know if you're with an instructor, maybe you like that instructor and you don't wanna change, but if the car's not suited to you, you're gonna make your life really hard. I find VW cars, which includes say it, Skoda, VW and Audi, the pedals are a bit higher off the floor and if your feet are below size five, it's harder to drive them. Whereas a Ford Fiesta, the pedals are closer to the floor, but conversely, those cars which are better for people with smaller feet can be harder for people with bigger feet because the pedals are too crowded, too close together, and you can end up pressing the brake and the gas at the same time. So don't think it's always necessarily you. Some cars are better suited to other people than others. Ah, if that makes sense. A little bonus for the video is heel and toe. Um, this is not for everyone, this is something that you'd only do if you're really into driving, to be honest. I'm not gonna go into reason why you do heel and toe. I'm just gonna explain the foot position and 
which is what this video is about, isn't it? A lot of people think it's actually heel and toe and that's where they go wrong. If you're actually trying to use your heel and your toe, that's not gonna work. I can't even twist my leg that much. It's more a case of just basically, it's just a, a name for the process. And the process is to be able to press the gas pedal a little bit whilst you're braking. And the important thing is to be able to do it without braking harder. What normally happens when people try to attempt it as they press the gas, they press the brake more too, which leads to very erratic braking, which is why you should not practice this on the public road. Once you're good at it, yes, you can use it on the public road. I use it all the time to make my gear changes better and faster. But how should you do it? Well, essentially, what you want to do is when the car's not even moving, just put your foot on the brake, press it a little bit, then move your heel to one side a little bit. So that might be why it's called heel and toe. You do move your heel a bit, but you don't tend to use your heel to press the gas. Then you choose the side of your foot like this, and you want to try and give the engine some revs without moving the brake at all. And if you practice that, like this, you see I'm moving the gas, but I'm not moving the brake. The pedal's flexing from side to side a bit, but it's not going up and down. If you can get good at that, then you can use heel and toe. Practice somewhere off the road to begin with. Once you're good, then you can use it on the public road. When you're bad at it, you will find your braking is quite harsh as you're trying to get good at it. Once you're good at it, of course you can use it on the public road, but I don't recommend practicing it or starting to get good at it on the public road because you will brake quite erratically whilst you're practicing. But once you're good at it, you can make you drive a lot more smoothly, um, making your gear changes a little bit more enjoyable too. It's something that normally high skilled drivers use, the average driver tends not to do it or even know what it is most of the time. Also, when you are practicing it stationary, make sure the engine's running so the vacuum assist is giving you power brakes because if it's not, your brake pedal is going to get really firm, which is not going to be realistic practice. It's going to be much easier to achieve it. And you're going to think, oh yeah, I can keep the brake pedal still and use the gas. But once you've got the engine on, that brake pedal gets loose again, you're probably not going to be keeping the brake pedal still as you use the gas. If you're practicing without an instructor, make sure you have insurance. Get £20 off via the link in the description to Collingwood who provides specialist learner insurance that allows you to practice in a friend or family member's car without risking their no claims bonus. If you want to insure your own car, click on the link to confuse.com. I have found that they have the widest selection of cheap insurers for young drivers. I hope the video helps. If it does, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to get my future videos. I'm Richard, this is Conquer Driving, and until the next one, cheerio.